Hello, this is Mike again from Scratch, and another Humble Bundle is upon us. Now, if you've never heard of it, the Humble Bundle is available at HumbleBundle.com. And basically, it's a collection of software or books and uh, other things, but generally software, um, that you can buy in different tiers and your money goes to charity. For example, right now, there's a game dev uh, bundle going on, and if you pay a buck, you get these programs. If you pay $6.71, you get these programs, and if you pay $10 or more, you get these programs. And that's exactly what we're going to look at right now. Right now. now, this video is being recorded on uh, December the 29th of 2016, and the Humble Bundle is going to run for uh, almost a dozen more days, so you've got some time to jump in it. If you missed it, sorry about that, but, uh, you know, so bad. Uh, so anyway, if we're going to jump in and take a quick look at what actually comes in this bundle. I'm not going to go into a lot of depth on any of the programs. However, if you do want to learn a bit more about the particular programs included in this package, uh, do let me know and I can actually jump in and do a bit more of a hands-on video for all of it. Obviously, I bought this package, uh, so I'm going to basically be showing you what is in this bundle and maybe it will be some appeal to you. Uh, now, first off, there's Click Team Fusion. Click Team Fusion is a programming environment, uh, codeless code um, programming environment. And it also, if you get the second tier, you also get the HTML5 export. Now, uh, for a dollar, you get access to Click Team Fusion. You can make apps for desktop, and then obviously HTML5 targets here. They've also got uh, iOS, Android, etc. modules for export, but they're obviously not included in this bundle currently. Now, I'm not going to get into a lot of detail on Click Team Fusion just because I've already actually done it. Just uh, last October, I did a closer look, uh, which is sort of a game engine review series I run here on Game From Scratch. So if you want to learn more about Click Team Fusion, this will run you through everything there. Now, the nice thing is Click Team Fusion uh, will synergize quite well with the pixel packages that are available in this uh, humble bundle for game developers. Uh, also, there is a video, so I will link both of these down below. So if you want to learn more about Click Team Fusion, check out down below got you covered for sure. All right, so back to the bundle. Uh, the next thing up we've got is Pixel Edit. Now for a buck, this is an absolute steal if you're working on pixel art. Uh, pixel Studio is, uh, let's see, this guy right here. As you can see, it is a pixel art oriented um, editor. Uh, the nice thing is it's cell or frame aware. These are tiles over here. So if you're working on a map, you could easily create full maps here, or you can create individual tiles. You can basically use it for, um, you know, just sprite drawing, or you can get into um, the multiple tile set drawing. And with the tile set support, you can see down here we've got animation support. It's relatively prim primitive, but you can see the end result right here. You've got a bit more control over here. We can control the number of frames, the playback speed, etc. And then the main event is actually the editor over here. You can see that uh, this is three different tiles in effect. I'll make this look a little bit more straightforward. So let's just do, we'll import a single image. So let me just grab one of those guys. So if you're working on a sprite image, obviously I could have created this from scratch. You've got your palette control over here, detail down here, so you can work with a fixed color palette if you're going for that more 16-bit retro look. So you don't have to use the tiles at all. Now you'll notice over here we also have layer support, so we can have multiple layers um, between them. And you get down here, it's a straight, you know, here's your fat bit. Uh, fat bit editor for doing pixel editing. And you know, you've got your typical tools down here. You've got your magic wand uh, for figuring out, oops, zooming's a little weird there. Uh, the outlines so you see my shadowing is is causing uh, and you got additional settings up here uh, you've got your pen tool your selection tools eraser um, color replacer color replacer is actually kind of cool it's for replacing uh, one set of color with another um, and down here you've got a color picker tool so it's a very straightforward sprite editing tool you can come in here and actually turn on a pixel grid so as we zoom in, we'll actually see a grid of each individual pixel. So each one of those is one pixel. So if you're working on pixel by pixel sprite art, this is a great little editor. It's sort of like a stripped down version of Photoshop that is tile aware and is optimized towards fixed palettes and pixel art. Now, I don't have a whole lot of experience with it yet, so I'm not going to go into much more detail than we just covered there. Uh, now, the next tool we've got in this selection, let's see, is Spriter. Now, Spriter is one of those packages that's actually available quite often, and it's a great bargain, especially for a buck. It's an unbelievable bargain at his buck. But you'll notice if you go through this pack, we've got a couple of art packs as well. Uh, so you see uh, basic platformer, adventure platformer, running gun. And then up here, you get your RPG heroes and radius wing shoot 'em up uh, art pack. So basically, that's a collection of um, assets to get you going using Spriter. Now, Spriter itself, 
let's see, Spriter is trying to recognize my icons now, this guy right here. Um, a lot like uh, Creature, if you saw my hands on with it in the past, or uh, Spine, uh, basically it is a bone-based animation system for 2D. What you do is you compose your image out of individual pieces, so you can see what they've done is basically split um, a sprite up into multiple different sub-sprites. So you can see it's got uh, the head, the wings, the body, all those individual things go together. And then here you can see the bones that are influencing them. And what it allows you to do is make multiple animations. So we see over here, there's a sleeping animation, the wake up animation, dropping animation. So we'll go ahead and just play that across the timeline. Uh, drop to fly like that. Here's the flying animation. So what you do is basically you cut your art up into uh, individual tiles. You take all those pieces, kind of compose them back together. You use a set of bones to define, uh, you know, how they will animate. And then you create different animations for them, as you can see here. Now, I am only really touching on the surface of what Spreader can do here. Uh, but this, this you can have for a buck. So if you don't already have Spreader and you're doing 2D animation, this is definitely something you should be checking out. Now, to get into a little bit more detail of what actually is coming with this pack, those packs we were talking about, I'll open a couple of them up. So we come down here, we go into Spriter. Here is your art pack. So you can see the action adventure, basic platformer, the shoot 'em up. Uh, so we'll do the shoot 'em up first. So radius wing, shoot 'em up. Uh, here, for example, is the player ship. We'll go down and see it's it's split into all these different pieces. So we'll open that up. So it's all the art assets you kind of want for making a game. Now the license allows you to use them for your own game, but not to use them in a way in that they're usable as assets. So for example, you can create and use these in your own game. No problem. It's a derived work, good to go. I, however, can't use them in a tutorial because that means I would ship them to you and you could use them as your own art assets without paying for them. So that's where the license kind of um, comes into effect. But you can see here is uh, one particular example. Um, like so, so it's all the art pieces you need to create a shoot 'em up game. A couple other examples we'll go into here. Uh, for example, let, let's do that run and gun. Um, here's a dragon robo boss. We'll open up that. And there you can see. So it's already created Spriter. So it's all of the graphics that go together to create this, so the various different pieces, and then a set of animation, like so. So if you are looking to, um, you know, if, especially if you're looking for programmer art and you're working around Spriter to start with, this asset pack could be a huge boon for you. And like I said, there's the, well, let's go back. Um, two asset packs here, one, two, three there. And then I think, okay, so we got the game effects art pack there, which is things like explosions, etc. And then the base Spriter package itself. So um, if you are looking for placeholder art or a 2D IK animation system, IK being inverse kinematic, it's the way that bones work. Um, if that's what you're looking for, the dollar tier is, <laughs> and then, like I said, a couple more bucks and you've got um, those various different assets to play with. So that's what you get for free. Now, none of those assets other than the effects package um, come with Spriter. So uh, that is your dollar tier. Now, if you jump up to the next price tag up, we've got the HTML5 exporter I mentioned earlier. This allows you to export your Click Team Fusion games to work in the web browser. Uh, next up, we've got a product called Marmoset. Marmoset is very, very cool, and we're going to look at it now. Now, Marmoset is... I, I believe it's at version 2.5. It is another sprite editor, a lot like the one we just looked at, Pixel, but a completely different approach. It's very complementary. So in this particular example, so you see we've got these different um, grid layouts, and the grid is very important in how um, Marmoset actually works. And what I'm going to do is go for like an isometric look. So this is built around triaxels. And that'll make sense in a second. Basically, triaxle is the underlying grid. So you can see right here, you're built of or composed of, and you're drawing in individual triangles. So if I wanted to draw a shape here, I'm in draw mode by default. I can just go and I'm drawing in that isometric tile perspective like so. Uh, very cool. So if you're working on uh, isometric style games, this is awesome. They're completely powerful, really quick. Uh, you can build things up really fast. Now if you're looking working with depth, for example, I can then come in here. I'll pick the cube mode instead. And now we draw out. We can do um, uh, let's see, a ramp coming down. Actually, I need to do it down a level. So, so if you want to get the illusion of, you know, depth going on, that enables you to do it. And we can switch out to a different edge style. And you notice how the grid's changing in the background. 
and it's all based around the drawing style of that particular grid. So you can get the illusion of depth really, really easy in here. And then they've got some cool tools like um, outline mode. So this allows you to, so say you want to add shadowing or edging to this particular piece. Uh, come on over here. We've also got um, good palette tools, good color configuration tools over here. So we go over to our palette. This is what's composed in our particular scene at the moment. So let's actually go ahead and add a new color. So we're going to use a blue. So we're going to outline our mustard with blue. And you'll see it traces and follows the edge. Like so. So if you want to do an outline on, oops, I jumped over, but you can see particular edge outline is easy to draw using that particular tool. We've also got a line tool, which is again aware of the, so you can see as it's expanding out, it's following the underlying grid we're working with. So if again, if you're working in isometric style, this is awesome. But on top of that, we don't have to, we're not stuck with isometric style. Uh, so right here, this is, I think the mode we are using now, but we've also got an octagonal style. So you can draw octagonally, if that's your thing. Uh, those aren't technically octagons. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, six, six hex, hexagons. Um, we've got a cube. Let's see. We got the fat cube style. And then we've got, again, that isometric style we started with to start with. So if you're going for that particular perspective, this is a really, really cool tool. I, I have to jump into a whole lot more. I'm only scratching the surface of what can be done here. Uh, but you see, again, we have layer support. We've actually even got uh, lighting and glow support for our scene. You want to get a specific look going on. Um, it also supports, I believe, tiling. I still have to come back. We've uh, This is one of those ones I've only really brushed the surface on what I'm capable of doing. And there's a whole lot more here. So you've got, again, like timeline support so we could do some uh, animation over time, if that's your thing. Uh, there's got layering support. A very, very cool package. And again, I need to jump into this guy in a lot more detail. But if you're going for an isometric style pixel art look, there's nothing out there that works as well as this, um, other than possibly working in full 3D. And even this is still easier, I find. And to give you an idea, other than my ass ugly work over here, let's go ahead and instead use one of their All right, discard. And we'll go with one of their samples. So you can see the kind of end result we can do. So you can do animations, as you're seeing going on here. You get isometric art style or... Here, let's show a room. This is made in trioxa mode. So there you can see, you know, the kind of work that you could do in this guy easily. And then we got, you know, navigation around tools. You can zoom in. And, okay, which one is it? Or alt. And you can zoom into the pixel level. Really great level detail. And then we come back here, just do our straight out draw. We're drawing in blue. So like so. And that's really... It's, it's a cool tool. It's a very, uh, very cool tool. Uh, so definitely one you should consider checking out if this is the style that you're going for. All right, back over. We've got uh, Todoist. Todoist, I'm not really going to get into much. It's a to-do list management system. It's a subscription you get one year. I'm also not going to get into a lot of detail for this one, one password. I find they're a little, they're both, you know, they're applicable to game development, but they're a little tangential in my opinion. So um, they're pretty much exactly what you expect. People really love Todoist, to be honest. I've got no experience with one password, so I've got no opinion there. Uh, we already covered this. This is the asset pack for Sprite. Uh, Pico 8. Pico 8 is an interesting one. Uh, I don't see a lot of use here in myself. Here you can see uh, this is what happens when you run Pico 8. And Pico 8 is basically a Lua hosted mini console. So if you wanted to like kind of virtually work like you would back in the old Commodore 64 games days. This is sort of like an emulated development environment for uh, creating code. I hate working with this old school Commodore 64 style chunky font. I don't find this is a great way to work, but some people really, really do, um, you know, love this kind of stuff. So here, let me go ahead and I don't know if I've already done this. We've installed the demos. Switch over to demos. Right, and let's run bounce. Or is it load bounce? All right, so loaded bounce, we'll run it. So there you can see the particular code running. And then if I, I think if I hit escape, we can get into, and there you can actually see the underlying Lua code uh, that is, you know, being run on this game. We go over here, we can um, go to the various different things. So here's like a fat pixel editor for this particular level. Um, Various, you know, just debuggers and registries. So it's sort of a retro console uh, for Lua programming. It's, it's, you know, some people really like working this way. I personally not a huge fan, but uh, you know, if this appeals to you, it is kind of like that old school easy console programming, like you used to 
code away with basic back in the 8-bit computer days. Uh, that's essentially what Pico 8 is. Um, again, it's a stripped down kind of different experience for programming, so it might be the kind of thing that appeals to you. I personally find the pixel style makes my eyes bleed, so I'm not really keen to go down that road again. Uh, this is a game... Um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, you get 10% off monthly for new subscribers. Oh, yeah, completely unrelated. And then the last program we've got here is Sprite Illuminator. Sprite Illuminator is a cool package. This is from uh, Code and Web, the same people that make Texture Packer a uh, product I'm hugely a, a fan of. I featured a number of times on my channel already, actually. And here is Sprite Illuminator. You can see the... Uh, the Drake image we've been using for a couple examples. All you do is basically drag in a sprite right over here, and this is for basically lighting them. Well, what we're doing here is we're creating a normal map. You can see there is the normal map that is going to be applied to our 2D image. So there is the end result. So if we want to go ahead and say apply some lighting, you see right here, this is the light source. And you can see the immediate effect it's having on the actual texture underneath. So again, normal map is nothing special to it, lit surface. So there is the lighting that we are generating by manipulating so the underlying shadow that's built into the source image I brought in. But you can you got a lot of control over so here, bring back the light. We could change our light color here. We could give this a pea green soup lighting effect, like so. And it's just a fast, quick way of lighting your sprites. But also you're generating this normal map over here, which can get kind of cool. So let me zoom in a bit here and we'll show you what we can do with that. Uh, so we can change the height. So we can come in here, we can change basically like you would use for drawing so let's say i wanted to you know make those pop out a little bit more let's drop our brush size down a little bit zoom in again and we'll just raise the height like so if we go back to our normal map you'll see we're actually raising and creating it on the normal map now where it really applies is let's say we wanted to give this a bit more of a dragon scale look so we come here and go to structure instead you see we've got bark as our default structure. We've got a number of different structures we can go with, so... Uh, what's the fun best? Probably bump. No, not bump. Yeah, we'll go with bark. So if we want to give this uh, this guy a little bit more texture... Now keep in mind, we're not, we're not modifying the underlying image at all. We are literally just modifying the normal map, which is then used as part of the lighting calculations to give us our end result. So here we are. So now if I want to add a little bit more texture to this guy... I could just come in here and go so we'll add some texture to the wings too like so and now we've got this kind of bark texture being applied to the back of our dragon and now if i go back and grab our light you'll see the results are being applied to that normal map as we pan it around some really, really cool effects can be done here very, very quickly. And again, I'm only touching on the surface of what you can do here. You've got um, various different special effects you can apply. Bossing, for example, etc. We'll discard that out. And then when you're done, you can either export out the normal map, which again is this guy that you see right here. Uh, normal maps can also be used in 3D. That's basically where the technique comes from. And if you've never heard of it, a normal map is... Um, it stores normal information. And normal information is the direction a particular face is pointing. But what it allows you to do is add a very, very detailed amount of basically, say, up or down, which is, you know, all you're really going to track with a normal app, detail to the surface without having to have more detail underneath it. And that additional detail affects your lighting model and enables you to have a whole lot more detail. And normally in 3D polygons, it's done where you can have a really, 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 really complex polygon that you render down to create a normal map for that you apply then to a simple polygon. Well, this is taking and applying that theory to a 2D image. Um, normal maps are very, very powerful and used in all kinds of game development techniques, but uh, not commonly in in, um, in 2D. So this is a kind of unique tool. There are a couple other sprite illumination tools. Uh, the only other one I can think of is uh, Sprite Lamp. But there are others I am com completely forgetting about, but there's also Sprite Lamp. But this is a great deal simpler to use. It's a very, very easy to use tool. Um, and let's go ahead and when you're done, you could go ahead and export your, your lit sprite. And basically you're just creating uh, a a resulting PNG file, but you could export just the normals, or we could also create an animation in here. So if I'd brought in uh, multiple sprites, like so, like that, we could 
go ahead and get that out as an exported animation with our lighting applied. So as you go from here, you'll see, so there I'm applying that particular light to that one frame, but you'll see it applies across all of the frames. And now we could export this out as an animation if we wished. Um, and it'll export as an animated GIF. Uh, this more probably for a gimmicky type of thing than it is for anything else. Uh, but as you can see, this is how you get your sprite out. This is how you get your normals out. And that's about it. And frankly, that is the end of the Humble Bundle. Uh, so 10 bucks gets you all of that. Um, again, we're probably getting to the point where you have a lot of the stuff already. For example, buying this one, I already had it. It. Um, it. So I already had like three or four of these packages, and it was still an easy buy for me. Uh, and I don't even do a lot of pixel artwork. Now, if you're not a pixel artist, the, the amount of stuff here for you is actually quite limited. But if you are working in pixel art, this is a hell of a tool chest for 10 bucks. Or even if you just go for the $1 approach, there's a lot of value in getting pixel edit and spriter for just a buck, not to mention a complete game engine, if that's your thing. Um, the other thing that's nice about this is the money does go. Uh, you decide when you um, purchase how you're going to allocate it between the Humble Bundle people themselves, the developer, and the particular charities. And in this case, the two recommended charities are uh, the Electronic Freedom Foundation and Child's Play. Uh, both are great causes. Both are well-respected uh, and well-audited charities, so you know your money is going where it should go. A Humble Bundle is a very well-established. They've been around for a couple years now. Um, they have a good reputation, so your money is also going to a great cause. Uh, so that's it. That is the Humble Bundle. I will link uh, this exact link down below. You have, if you're watching this today, you have just under 12 days to go ahead and get it. I hope you did find that useful. And again, if you found an individual program in there that you want a lot more details on, uh, other than Click Team Fusion, which I've already covered, uh, do let me know. Um, I intend to cover Spriter in the future as it is, uh, but the other tools, are you interested in learning more about Pixel? Are you interested in learning more about Marmoset? Are you interested in learning more about Sprite Illuminator? Uh, do let me know, and I can go into them in some more detail in the future. I hope you found that useful. If you did, please do click like. And if you're into game development at all, I'm sure you'll find something to love on this channel. If so, do please click subscribe and hopefully you will enjoy what you see. Uh, that's it for now. See you all later. Goodbye.